Hey guys, it's Steph. Welcome back to my YouTube channel for the third video of the day. Uh, today we're going to discuss uh, Chuck Wendig and his hilarious attempt at dissing J.R.R. Tolkien. So have fun. Enjoy. Um, I use examples and things like that. So sit back and relax. Oh, remember, if you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. Please hit that bell for more content so you know when I upload more content. Hit the likes and share away here. We share away here because we love Star Wars. So it's here's Steph, welcome back to, to my YouTube channel for the third video of the day. Uh, you know, a few days ago, Chuck Wendig uh, fired a uh, comic book writer from Lucasfilm and Marvel Comics uh, for dissing and saying really disgusting things about Brett Kavanaugh. Um, went out of his way to diss. Uh, J.R.R. Tolkien. Now, Wendig, you would think, would admire J.R.R. Tolkien because J.R.R. Tolkien invented the fantasy genre, right? But Wendig had to trash him. Now, I assume the reason why is because J.R.R. Tolkien is a white man. A dead white man. I always find it strange that it's usually, uh, you know, you know, lefty white men who, who make asses of themselves and attack white men. And, you know, Chuck Wendig is the person who fits that. Now, I've got a few things like I, I've, you know, if you look at Wendig's writing, um, and I've got one of his books here. Uh, this is going to meet the fire pit. I'm going to do a video, but see, here it is, uh, a paperback this time. Um, New York Times bestseller, my ass. Uh, you know, it's not written well. You know, it, it just, it's, it's just, it's, it's, when I look at this, I can't get into it because it's so bad. Um, and it's supposed to be on Han and Chewy, and they're not in it. I mean, you know, I don't. All these, and, 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 and his lack of present, t he uses present tense. He doesn't even know how to write a, a, a novel from an omnipotent point of view. All right, I'm going to read you guys something. Um, you know, just, uh, All right, let me find something. The Quiet of Kashyyyk is unsettling, is unsettling. You would write that. Kashyyyk's quiet. All right, I'll think about this. Quiet of Kashyyyk could be unsettling for people. Or for people, or, you know, you, there's, there are different ways of writing it. Is unsettling. Nothing is here. I mean, it's just, this is just, nothing is here. No life, <clears throat> no insects buzzing, no rush of, of underbrush brush as creatures pick, pick through sticks and leaves. Sticks and leaves. The, I mean, it's all just present tense. Crap. It's shit. This is just, it's, it's, it's written for a three-year-old. Okay? I mean... I mean, I haven't seen uh, weebling and wobbling and hurricane and jerking around, but this is just shit. Why did he get this job? Oh, I remember. He's woke. Okay. I'm going to tell you guys something. Guys like uh, Jackass here get jobs not because they're talented because he's not. It's because they're woke. And when they were looking to hire new authors because they weren't satisfied with the EU... They trashed the EU. They hired jackasses like this. Okay. So anyway, um, what else? Uh, you know, we've got that. But let's let's talk a little bit about, let's compare, uh, you know, Mr. Lack of Grammar uh, to J.R. Tolkien, who was a master of grammar. In fact, unlike Chuckles, J.R.R. Tolkien actually wrote his own uh, language. He wrote Elvish. He came up with Elvish. Now, 
I just came up with Brainy Quote, but I kind of want you guys to uh, uh, just hear some of this. I mean, I'm going to read part of this, this poem. I think everybody who is a uh, Tolkien fan knows this. All that is gold does not glitter. Not all those who wander are lost. Okay, where did it go? Oh, shit. Well, damn it. Now it's... Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay, let's go back. All that is gold does not glitter. Not all those who wander are lost. The old that is strong does not wither. Deep roots are not reached by the frost. Now, that's just part of that poem, but anybody who has read any of Tolkien's writing from... Uh, uh, the, the Rings trilogy to The Hobbit to the Silmarillion can hear the, the poet, the poetic writing in lilting style of J.R. Tolkien. Here we go. There's another one. Still round the corner, there may wait a new road or a secret gate. Another poem. These are things that are easy to understand, but they're not written for little kids. And this pretty much convinced C-Spot Run books would actually teach you how to read better than that shit. All right. You know, it's, I mean, Tolkien is, I think, probably the greatest, I think, one of the greatest writers that ever lived. He basically invented the fantasy genre. He wrote his own language, Elvish. He came up with the grammar for Elvish. I mean, I don't think Chuck Wendig could come up with anything like that because he's not smart enough. He's not, he's definitely not a genius. So one more and then I'll let you go. The proper study of man is anything but man and the most improper job of any man, even saints who at any rate were at least unwilling to take it on, is bossing other men. Not one in a million is fit to do it, fit, is fit for it. And at least of all those who seek the, and at least of all those who seek the opportunity. Gee, there's a con comment on today. Um, here's another one, I think, from The Habit. Habits are unobtrusive, but very ancient people. More numerous formerly than they are today. For they love peace and quiet and good tilled earth. A well-ordered and well-farmed countryside was our favorite haunt. You've already got a world being built around hobbits. Then you have the elves, worlds being built around elves. You know, you, you uh, then you've got Mordor. You've got the dwarves who live in the, the mountains, uh, in the mines. Uh, you know, these are worlds built around for these characters. And the worlds are have as much to do with how the characters behave as anything else, any outside influence. Um, and it's it's funny that Tolkien did that because George Lucas did that as well. Um, what I find in the end of uh, Wendig's whining, crying, ranting, and raving, see if I can find another really great one. Um, oh, this is great. Jome. These are terrible names too. I mean, where the fuck does he get these? Drill drips from Jome's chin as he grunts pushing himself up on shaky arms. He falls back down, pain radiating through his old shoulder injury. With one hand, he fumbles gamely for the blaster rifle hanging on his back, but the toe of a boot pries his hand away and gently steps on it. Ste steps on it. It's just, God! It's, it's like, you know, somebody with, with, with an IQ of five wrote this shit. You know, with... I mean, all right, you know, there's, there's, he's done, Wendig has done nothing at all to advance the, the, the world that George Lucas created, uh, in Return of the Jedi, one iota, um, looking at, at how he, uh, looked, looked at Kashyyyk, it's like, no, if you go back, like, and you look at A.C. Crispin's, uh, solo origin stories you open them up and you will find um when Chewie goes back to Kashyyyk to uh court M Maladabuk, 
his wife, um, he, Crispin went through a great deal of trouble to create this beautiful um, uh, strange place that was a world high in the trees. The Wookiees didn't live on the ground, they lived high in the trees, okay? And to me, it's just, it's absolutely fascinating to, uh, to read it because you can, you can, you can see how this place shaped Chewbacca. And the Kashyyyk here is just, it's just, it's garbage. And then for the guy to write, who wrote this garbage to go after J.R. Tolkien, fuck you, man, okay? You know, up yours. You know, go get, you know what he should do? This is what, this is what one day could do, should do. If he's such a great goddamn writer, why doesn't he do an India Go Go account, account, come up with his own thing and create something brand new that nobody's ever seen before? Okay, that is my challenge for every SJW everywhere. Instead of fucking with the stuff that's already there, ruining it, shitting on it, why don't you make up your own? I dare you. George Lucas would have encouraged you to do that. Take me up on that. And oh, by the way, Chuck, you couldn't carry J.R.R. Tolkien's pipe. Tolkien is a legend. He, his, his works will never die. No one, no one, and I mean no one, is ever going to remember who the fuck you are. This is Steph, signing out. I'll see you around the galaxy. I'll see you around the cantina. And remember to tip your Wookiee bartenders 20%. And don't start any fights in the cantina because the Wookiees smash everything. And I got some really big Wookiee bartenders. I mean, these guys are oversized. And they trash everything and I have to pay for it. I don't want to do that. I really don't want to dock their pay because they pretty much keep order, you know. So anyway, I'll see you guys around and, uh, you know, stay on. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please remember, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Hit the bell for more content. And uh, please hit the like button. We do likes around here and share away here. We share away here for Love Star Wars. And I want to again thank you for stopping by. I really appreciate all the comments. Um, I might come off a little harsh sometimes. But, uh, you know, I'm here to make people think outside the box. And... I'm here to try to uh, open a few more minds to other ideas. So that's why I'm here. And share away here for the Star Wars. I will be, be back later. See you around the galaxy. See you around the cantina. And have a good evening.